to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it, we have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of A Well-Designed Business. It's Power Talk Friday. I have Fred Burns with me. Hi, Fred. How are you? Salutations, Luann. Good to talk to you once again. I'm smiling and laughing already, friend. We didn't even get started. <laughs> We've done this before. We know we know this drill. A few well. times. A few yeah. times. So and that's exactly the truth. If you are a loyal listener of the podcast that you know Fred Burns is, you know, one of I have to say, Fred, I was telling everybody that you were the single most repeated guest on the show. And then Judith Cor- uh, Neary and Corey Classen pointed out to me that they are the show one time more than you Uh and so yes they straighten me out they're like you keep saying it and it's not true (laughs) but now this is going to even you out with them i think (laughs) we have to deal with the silver medal not the gold here exactly 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 so but anyway for any of maybe my new listeners out there that might possibly not know who fred burns is i'm going to tell you that fred burns is a coach a copywriter and he helps designers with more than 25 years experience he brings to the table and he's been helping design professionals from Dallas to Dubai to create their online profiles, to create their website and to create their social media copy for blogs, their marketing forms and everything else. He offers a wide range of coaching services ranging from his high performance coaching program to his bio briefing and his website once over. And here's the thing. Fred and I were just talking Hmm. off air about something uh, about my books that are out. And Fred is also one of the co-authors in my most recent book, A Well-Designed Business, The Power Talk Friday Experts. And literally in like five seconds, he's spewing out these and I'm like taking notes. I'm like, oh, I have to use that. I have to say that. (laughs) So you are a powerful copywriter, Fred, and it just kind of just flows. It's like it's, it's that whole body of work, that experience that you have, right? Well, when you have gray hair and you've been doing this so long, uh, <laughs> this is, gets to be second nature after a while. What can I say? Okay. Well, and it's so funny because I wasn't intending to say this to you, but now that you brought up the gray hair, you know, I had more than, I would say, way more than just a few of the ladies that attended Luann Live in, in uh. March with us say to me, and my goodness, Fred Burns, he is so handsome, that silver oh, fox. <laughs> <laughs> So a few, quite a few, Fred, quite a few. I have to say. You can't see me now, but I'm turning red. I'm blushing. (laughs) Oh, anyway. So today, it's funny because today's topic is get ready to go steady. (laughs) That's right. We're we're, we're going steady here. No no more of these one night stands. This is all about going steady with our businesses. That's it. You want to say how to turn single sales into long term sales, right? Um, Long term relationship, yeah. You have this passion, Fred, for really trying trying to help designers avoid leaving money on the table. I love the way you describe it. Vinny uses the same language. Why are we leaving money on the table? What else can we do for these you know, people? How else can we serve them? What other products can we yeah. bring to them, right? So tell That's us right. a little bit about your philosophy on that. Well, uh, my philosophy is we're spending way too much time with our binoculars, Luann. We're looking way out there in all these un, un, uh, unusual places for, for new clients when we should, in fact, be focusing in our, on our microscopes and really dissecting our current clients and realizing what, what gold there is in the clients we work with, you know. Um, I, I often talk about the, the common denominators, the most successful, financially successful designers I've worked with over the past 30 years, and one of them, without question, is that they connect with their current clients. They mm-hmm. realize that when it comes to client relationships, this is not about quantity, it's about quality. 
And in fact, early on, when I first started as a coach and a copywriter for designers, one of the most successful designers I knew at the time had three clients, three clients. Wow. And she realized that there was such value in these clients. They were, they were all high-end clients, obviously. But she kept going back to them and, and kept developing this relationship and in the process really developed uh, financial success that way. And I think that uh, in our industry, there's way too much one and done. There's way, way too much uh, uh, moving on to the next client. And, and that's, a, to me, a, f a formula for disaster. It's a formula for a short-term um, situation. And it's really about uh, focusing, and that's what this discussion is about today, focusing on lasting long-term relationships. That, that is really the shortcut to success when it comes to working with clients, is, is uh, looking, looking long, looking right. uh, for deep relationships, you know, and thinking in terms of how, how best, what, what additional ways can you serve these clients with whom you develop these relationships early on. Right. And the thing is, I know that one of the things that you talk about is that not only is your current clients your best source of finding more business in the moment, right? But you also talk about how working more often with your current clients actually saves you more money in the course of running your business. Tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. It costs five times as much to attract a new customer, Luann, than it, than it does to retain an existing one. So uh, for those designers who feel as if, feel compelled to keep on marketing and keep on promoting to new clients, uh, it's gonna cost them more money. Uh, the long-term value of a client is 100 times more than the, uh, than the value of a single transaction. And when you're looking for new relationships, oftentimes those begin with single transactions. So you really have to get the big picture here. And uh, the problem is, I think, that oftentimes your clients don't realize all that you can do. And mm. in all due respect, that is not their fault. That is your fault because you haven't done a, a good enough job of communicating your value and, and, and talking about all that you can do. And that's why, you know, I'm the bio guy. I'm all about creating online bios for design professionals around the world. That's the message that we really convey in these bios, in, in these online promotion profiles, the fact that uh, you're a full service designer and you uh, can help them in a, in a wide variety of ways. And that is a message that needs to be conveyed to every client you work with, um, uh, you know, and 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 that's why uh, developing long-term relationships is a much easier way to reach financial success. Yeah, definitely. And I have to say, I know that firsthand with Window Works, it is it's it's it actually almost feels like a stomach punch sometimes when I will be standing there talking to a client that has been a long time client and maybe just in a casual conversation I might say oh yes we, you know our guys were in Manhattan last week and we're doing this installation at the White Hotel of this amazing awning product that is going to triple the size of their patio space and they can use it in winter and and they're <laughs> looking at me and they're like you, wait, what are you, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh you yeah, the, we do awnings <laughs> and we do retry. And they just like, I didn't know that. And that's when like, I just like say to myself, well, don't tell Vinny that you said that to me because he'll yeah. kill me. <laughs> because Vinny is, Vinny is probably the only one in our business. I can really, you know, I'm probably the only one who's not good at it. Let's do that. I was going to say, he's the only one who's good at it. And then I'm like, wait, Kim's good at it. Well, Rich is good at it. JC's not good <laughs> at it. I'm probably the one who's the most guilty of not really doing that intentionally with every single client of actually saying, you know, I know that today you and I worked on doing draperies for you, but do you know that we also have woven shades or That's that we right. do That's awnings right. or that we can, you know, whatever it is, because and, and, you and think the they know and they don't. And the problem is if you don't do that, Luann, it, it's a one dimensional relationship. You right. go in, you do a kitchen, they think, well, he or she is a kitchen specialist, right. and that's all they do. And again, that's a case of them not having the information, not realizing and appreciating all that you do. And, and when you think about it, uh, they want a long-term relationship just as badly as you do. Exactly. They really do. I mean, yeah, I they, don't, they don't have the time to be shopping around when they have additional design projects. And they'd much rather work with someone that they know and trust and uh, like than have to keep on looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> it's so, so true. It's, it's so true. We're all, we want to work with the people that we already know get us and that we already feel like we trust to your point. You're going to turn over a credit card. There are thousands of dollars worth of purchases on your behalf. And it is nicer to work with people that you've worked with before. And I think that if, 
if I didn't have the advantage of being in business so many years and really know how often I have personally been surprised that someone didn't know the other products that we service and we sell, I would think, ah, come on, everybody knows. But it's it's absolutely true that if you don't, if you don't like actually take the time to say, and I can also do this for you. Like Vin has printed up a thing that we say, all the wonderful services and products is that you can access through WindowWorks. And he and Kim, I know for a fact, both of them, hand it to every single customer, literally hand yeah. it to every single client. Once they take their deposit and they're ready to do the project, Vin will say, and hey, you know, here are all the other things that we can do. Keep it in mind to tell your friends and family, blah, blah, blah. And, and Vin sounds like a, a great professional <laughs> billiards player, which, which all design professionals should be. You should always be setting up your next shot. You should yes. always be talking about phase two before you even finished phase or started phase one. Mm -hmm. You should be talking about the vacation homes before you've started on the primary residence. You should be talking about the, the uh, branch offices before you've started on the, on the corporate office. You're always, you're basically taking your clients by the hand and, and say, here's what we do next. Right, um, and, right. And, uh, and, and the key here is to pr present yourself not as a design provider, but as a design partner. You're partnering with these clients. The most successful designers I've worked with over the years are partners. They develop partnerships. They're always ch uh, 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 checking in and, and working with their clients in a variety of ways. And uh, they develop this trust so that it, it, it really, these lasting relationships just come naturally for them. Mm, I it's, love it. I, and the thing is, there's ways to do that where you talk about the next phase before you're even knee deep into the existing one that are not pushy. It's like, they, like to my point, Vin just does it. Very, by the way, I'm just going to leave this with you. Let me let you know the other services we do in case you need it in the future or your friends or your neighbors do. So it's not, you're not already selling the next phase. You're just informing of the other other things that you're capable of doing. And to your point, right. somebody who's doing a kitchen renovation for somebody, that client might not realize that you can do floor plans because it's such a really a different aspect of the design profession is to do, you know, that. So maybe they don't realize you do it. What do you think? I, 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 knew, I knew a design professional who always entered the home through the windows. She began with, you know, it, it began with a window sale. And inevitably, in the course of doing the window, she would ask the million-dollar question, how's the kitchen working for you? Mm. And you know and I know, Luann, that people are never satisfied with their kitchen. <laughs> so it, 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 it turned into a discussion about updating and upgrading the kitchen. And uh, the, you know, she, she initially had presented herself as a window fashion professional. Then she started talking about her full-service capabilities, and she was selling kitchens for uh, lots of money in, right. in the process. So. Right. Um, again, understand that your clients don't know all that you can do. They, mm -hmm. they, and, and, and it's your job to inform them to, and, and, uh, and not keep to them. feel embarrassed to inform them, not to feel yeah. shy about doing it. That's really the point is to share the information because to your point, somebody would rather continue working with you provided the experience is good than think, Oh, that was a great experience in the kitchen. And now I got to find somebody to do furniture for me. What a pain, right? Yeah. yeah. I, I had a designer tell me years ago that she felt as a disservice not to inform her clients about all that they could do. I, all I that agree. Could do. Agree. I totally agree. Now she tell felt me, guilty. Yeah. Was, like she, guilty. yeah, she right. She wasn't helping them to the best that she possibly could. I agree with that. Um, what are some of the things that you have seen in your coaching of interior designers for more than 25 years, Fred? What are some of the things that you see that prevent us from getting repeat business from our existing client base or from referrals from our existing client base? Well, the main thing, as we've discussed, is the fact that clients just don't know all the you Okay, can do. so that's the number yeah. one thing. It's just not letting them know that you can be referred or you can be repeated for a different uh, thing. Okay. And and, and the other and another thing is, is not doing the upselling and the cross selling and the uh, and the crossover selling that 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 savvy designers do. You know, it's it's basically. Uh, I think there's a, a guilt out there, Luann. A lot of people feel uh, uncomfortable about bringing up other things, but I, I think you've got to position this as a service, not not as an imposition. Uh, uh, you know, this idea that you're you're doing a, your your clients a service by telling them by by asking the questions and and letting them know that you do these kind of things. Right. Um, so it's it's a matter of of keeping them informed of all that you do and. Right. and uh, one of the ways to do this, I think, uh, and, and a great way to generate referrals and uh, follow-up business and, uh, and and positive reviews 
is is to take your best clients to lunch. I, I think this is one of the great mm -hmm. marketing strategies of all time. And, and, and by that, I mean you uh, take a top client to a really nice restaurant for lunch and you spend the first half of that lunch discussing uh, or expressing appreciation and gratification for uh, the, the work you've done for their being such a good client. So halfway through this, this lunch, this appreciation lunch with one client or three clients or four clients, you say the phrase to the page, you say, I need your help. I'm looking to work with more clients such as yourself. What would you recommend I do? Now, you'll be surprised how giving and um, enthusiastic they are, they will be in res responding to that question. They, again, they know you, they like you, they want to help you, and rather than feeling opposed upon, they'll feel honored to, to assist you in all sorts of ways, mm -hmm. and they'll give you some great ideas. So, um, and in, in so doing, they, they, they join your marketing team, you mm -hmm. know? And, and, and continue to work with you and, and help you in several different ways. But th that is a, an excellent way to take these relationships to the next level, is to have a personal meeting with them. Um, and, and the nice thing about getting three or four of your best clients together, it's often done in, in midsummer, sometimes over the holidays, is it becomes, com becomes a game of one-upsmanship. Everyone at that table is trying to come up with better ideas on how you could be successful, how you can grow your business, and how you can really expand into the luxury marketplace. So mm. it, it's an effective way to establish long-term relationships and, and solid relationships when you have that kind of personal interaction. Interesting. Them. So I know that you're talking from a personal experience. I know that you're talking from designers that you've worked and coached that have done this. So not only do you have the opportunity, you're not saying what you're saying is not only take the opportunity to invite a single client, but you're saying invite two or three. Are they, are they, do they know each other already? Or you're just saying, Hey, wouldn't this be fun to, I think two or three of you might get along and I just want to have like this celebration lunch. You've all had projects with me this past year. How do you, how do you suggest putting together two or three clients in a, a meeting like that, that might not know each other? It doesn't matter if they know each other or not. It, what you're communicating, you're, you're kind of telling them that um, you're so grateful for the opportunity to have, have work with them, that you're selecting your top clients to okay. uh, uh, honor for, uh, at, at a lunch like that. Okay. Okay. And you, re you really do spend the, the first part of that lunch uh, expressing your, your gratitude for their, their mm -hmm. work. And, mm -hmm. and then, then it turns into a focus group. And um, I, again, the more you have at that table, the more positive ideas and, and positive interaction you'll get so mm. it, what i love fun. thinking about it too is because you could be you could be very strategic about the people that you invite not just from the standpoint of considering your own benefit in it but possibly placing people at the same table that could benefit each other right yeah. so if i right so that's like a win-win so if i've got a realtor and a banker and you know a candlestick maker i don't know <laughs> you know the realtor and the banker might be able to do business together you know they it might bring Mortgages, yes. And so, you know, we're not saying that's what it is. You're saying that you're inviting to appreciate. You're saying that I'm creating a little event that I just want to. I love the way you say my top accounts, my top clients, yeah. my, you know, you know, whatever words you use um, to have a little lunch. But then that underlying benefit is I'm just thinking if I went to a lunch like that and for me from the standpoint of window works, if I did meet, say, an interior designer or a realtor and, you know, would it, I'd be like, hey, jackpot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like maybe we yeah. can do some business together, you know. And then I do like the idea of saying I need your help. What, you know, give me some advice. Where would I find more people that are just like you amazing people? Because we do, by nature, want to help people that we like. So I would genuinely, I would absolutely genuinely sit there and think. Now, this isn't the Cutco method, right? So you know how you've had the kids sell you Cutco, yeah. right? Can I have the names of four people that right. I can call right. today to do the Cutco pitch? And by the way, I love Cutco knives. And I think it's hysterical <laughs> that they make these 18-year-old kids do this, but it's yeah. great sales training right when you come up training like that Brad you can sell anything right but and you're it's asking not questions that, like, right? uh, what, what social media do you follow what what organizations do you belong to you know uh, mm -hmm. that you think would be good for me to connect with and um, it, it's 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 marketing 101 you're 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 basically expanding your marketing network in the process and again they start after this event that we're talking about they start looking out for you right now um, that said 
the there is the issue of a, lot, of a lot of your clients not knowing all that you do, and that's why I think this is a great time of year to send out what I call the guess what letter. You mm. know, and my guess what I what I'm saying is just a brief uh, email to you to your client base talking about guess what I'm I'm. I'm adding more services, or I'm I'm now, I'm doing expanding into vacation homes now. I'm doing corporate offices now. I'm doing crossover design, so I'm, I'm doing uh, um, offices as well as homes or whatever. And this may or may not be new information, but basically, uh, and of course, you're attaching your bio, that million dollar marketing tool <laughs> to this. And in the process, you're letting people know, people who you for whom you may have done one project several years ago, you're letting them know that about all you can do and how they can uh, work with you in a lot of different ways. So uh, even, you know, maybe you've been doing vacation homes for a long time. Maybe you've been doing uh, uh, corporate offices for a long time, but the majority of people may not know that. And mm -hmm. so what I'm suggesting is a, a brief mid midsummer, mid-year letter talking about the fact that you're expanding your services, you're working with more vendors and suppliers now, or whatever, and uh, make sure you have a killer bio attached to that. So they look at you, they think of you in an entirely different light. They realize that, that uh, boy, you know, we, we just worked on that one, the, the outdoor kitchen before, but th this is someone we can call on for many other things as well. Right. So it's, um, I, I think, really good way to uh, plant the seeds for long-term relationships. Yeah, I love it. It's so it's so true. And you know, it's the guess what did you know, or it could be did you realize? Did you know that I yeah, also I did right. I did kitchens for you? Did you know I do corporate offices? Do you know that I do this or that or the other thing? It is. It's so important to just keep putting yourself in front. I mean, we say it. We do say it at Window Works all the time. Every single Monday, we have our sales meeting, and we're always reviewing the last two weeks worth of appointments. We're reviewing the appointments that are coming up the following week, and we're always saying that same thing what other things can we do for the same people um, we added window film a few years ago and it's so then it was like well we have 35 years of customers that have no idea that we do window film so <laughs> right. let's let them know you know what I mean um, and we do um, we still do snail mail campaigns crazily enough <laughs> um, yeah. but uh, we have a, a campaign that will go out in September. So, and, and and this is a good point too, because depending on what a designer's ladder of services are, like for Window Works, we sell retractable awnings to the residential uh, market. And so, what will happen is in September and then in January, we will send a letter to every single person that we've sold an awning to from three years ago. And oh, there you go. Right. So, we go back three years to five years. So, the, the f most recent three years, we skip those people. We go from the third year back to the fifth to, to going to what would be the eighth year back. And we mail them a letter that says, you know, is is it time to repair or clean the awning that we did for you? Yeah. And it's and it and it's amazing because you know, we will literally send out 2800 pieces of snail mail on this. Wow. And for the most part, we'll probably get anywhere from 5 to 15 sales on it but that's, if that's typical yeah. it is and the thing is if we get 15 sales maybe five of those people are going to say yeah come clean my awning and that's a 400 hundred dollar bill but five others are going to say i think i'll just take a new one thanks very much and that's a five thousand dollar bill <laughs> you know what i'm saying and, and so you know, luann the, the numbers support what you're doing you know yes. peter drucker the management consultant estimated that you have a one in 14 chance of selling something new to a prospect, to a new prospect, but you have a one in two chance of selling something to a current or former client. Right. So it makes all the sense in the world for you to do this kind of marketing, whether it's a focus group, whether it's a lunch, whether it's a, a, a guess what uh, type of letter that you send out. Um, you're working with people who are, are, are much more likely to buy from you. Right. So it, it really makes sense. And again, and because the, you developed this long term, you developed this trust with them. They, they know you, they like you. Right. And the thing is, so for interior designers, maybe you did do somebody's 
kitchen five years ago so or 10 years ago more to the point 10 years ago maybe there's a refresh maybe you would like me to come out and just do new accessories new hardware new paint color on the wall and it just makes it feel new again that's something that you know might be a 500 hundred dollar service right it's just something to make some dollar bills and then to your point you get in the house and maybe you're going to just do the refresh on the existing kitchen and i don't know half hour into it maybe we should just do the backsplash over again and we probably should just do the countertop because i really (laughs) want marble and it's granite and who has granite anymore (laughs) I know. And, you know, those bar stools, they're looking pretty old, too. Let's just do those over. But, you know, it just think about the ways that you can service and be of value and of service to your existing client. And you have no idea the ways that it might multiply out is your point. Right, Fred? Yeah. And and again, we look at the numbers. I mean, if you uh, double your repeat or or if you increase your repeat business by 40 percent, you can double your income in a year. Whoa. Say that's a powerful number. That's a powerful number. Yeah. So it's not rocket science here. This is basically uh, going to the people who know you and like you and saying, or or advising them on on what the next step might be. Mm -hmm. And the other thing too is, it doesn't just work for mature businesses like mine that has over 30,000 customers in our career, right? This works for, if you're in business three years and you have 10 clients, you can do these things with those same 10 clients. And maybe this coming year, out of those 10 clients, two will do a new project with you. And that's as valuable at your stage of business than trying to go out and find two strangers to do a project with you, right? Yeah. And at the very least, by recontacting them, they could refer you to somebody else. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, if you did a project for them 10 years ago, they may have forgotten about you. But by by sending them a letter, by by reaching out to them at least, mm-hmm. you get back on their, uh, their radar screen and they may just think of you uh, when it comes to a friend who needs the kind of service you offer. So mm-hmm. it's really good. So what we're really talking about is an in it for the long run attitude. You know, it, mm. it's 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 making them long and making these relationships long and making them lasting. And it's it just staying in touch. And um, and I think and this is you know this and I know this, but this is an obvious point. Superior customer service is the backbone of this. I mean, yes. I think all design professionals should offer 100 percent money back guarantee because you do anyway. I mean, if, right. someone, <laughs> if you tick off a client who's not happy with your work, you give them your money back anyway. So why don't you verbalize that? Why don't you differentiate yourself by promoting your 100 percent money back guarantee? Why don't you be t- transparent in your pricing and um, and realize that this can lead to a, a, a really lucrative future by having this kind of of uh, um, relationship. You know, a client is 22 times more likely to do business with you if you return the call in five minutes or less. Something Whoa. as simple as that. Wow. And you don't want to tick them off. I mean, uh, I, I was reading a, a study by the Strategic Planning Institute. The average upset customer, I mean, if for some reason you've upset one of these long term customers, they tell nine people, but one in five of them tell 20. Whoa. The average, <laughs> the average business never hears from 96% of unhappy customers, but 90% of them won't buy from, from those businesses again. Um, That's, wait, wait, stop right there. That is a very powerful statement, and I know that to be true. That is so true. You could have whatever percentage you just said, 96% people unhappy with something, and 90 of them are not going to tell you they're just not going to call you again. Yeah, that's it. That's Um, right. That's very, I just said that in a coaching session the other day, somebody said to me that they heard from someone else that this particular client was upset with them and had said, I'm not going to call this designer any longer. And I said, do you want this person as a, as a client? Like, cause if you do, you've got to pick up the phone and call. You have to say, I understand you're not happy. You cannot let that go just off into the wind. I said, because at the very least, even if you don't earn the client back, maybe there's a meeting of the minds and you can diffuse that going around and telling 25 people not to use you. Right. Here's the good news. Uh, of customers with a complaint, 70% of them will do business with you again if you resolve the problem. See? <laughs> and 95% of them will do so if you do if you respond quickly. Right. 
Yeah. So, people uh, want to be heard. You know what that is? That's Fred. Yeah. That's people want to be heard. They want right. to be heard. And if you hear them, they most of the time will give you the opportunity to make it right. But you have to be willing to have the hard conversation. You can't shove it under the rug and you can't stick your heels in the ground and say, I didn't do anything wrong. Find out. Obviously, they perceive that you have. Whether or not you have or haven't, that's still up for debate at this moment. But until you make the phone call and find out, you know, you have no idea. Yeah, you can't avoid conflict. Uh, I mean, if you're afraid of, of conflict, it's going to turn into something worse in the long run. Basically. That's the funny thing, right? I don't know if you, you listen to the show. I repeat this all the time because I just love it so much. You know, I had Lee Cockrell on the show, Fred, and he was the, he's retired now, but he was the um, senior VP of Worldwide Disney Operations. Oh, now, wow. What company is more known for their customer service than Walt Disney, right? None I mean, that I know. <laughs> exactly. And he said, when you have the hard conversation, everything else gets easier. When you avoid the hard, com when you, I always say it backwards. I'm such a dummy. Um, when you avoid the hard conversation, everything else gets harder. And when you have the hard conversation, everything else gets easier. I think I still messed it up, but you get my point. <laughs> I, I understand. And, and, uh, and you know, and I know we, we've had some hard conversations in our careers and yep. uh, they are difficult, but in the long run, it, it makes the result, the outcome better for everyone. Well, you know what it is for me, Fred, is that as difficult as it is to have the hard conversation, I know that it, it's harder the newer you are in business because it's terrifying to be in a position where you are afraid that it, it's not going to end well. But what I always think to myself is it's already not ended well. It's I, 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 yeah. I, if I don't do anything, it's guaranteed that it stays in the not ended well position position. Whereas right. if I just will suck it up and come into it and make suck the it up out of cup. that's it, right. right? Just put my big girl panties on and make the effort to have the conversation in an open minded way. I at least have the opportunity then to, to your point, get 70% of those people back into my business fold. Right? right. But if I don't make the call, it's a hundred percent guarantee that they're not coming back. And, and, you know, God forbid, running around town talking negatively about you. So, um, you know, sure. and, and, I, and I'm happy to note uh, there is gold in your current clients, mm -hmm. you know, basically. And, and you've got to think in terms of, of going beyond one and done. You've got to think in terms of beyond that one dimensional relationship that you started by just doing a project. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is where uh, you need to really look, really dissect these, you know, look through that microscope and really figure out what other opportunities, what next steps are available for you to work with these clients. And, I, uh, I have to say, I think in the beginning of the conversation that you mentioned it, and I will also again share from the window of experience through window works is that the luxury client. So when you mentioned the one designer has most of her, their career has been based on three clients. Yeah. I, yeah. I, when I think about the roster of the luxury clients that we, the luxury designers that we service at window works, it's, it, bears out so true. There's like Charles Pavarini is one of the very high end luxury designers here in New York City that we've done his window treatments for many years. And he's got clients that we've done seven, eight, nine times multiple right. homes. Richard Carpenter is another one. He just called me just this past week. He said, XYZ client that we've been working with with him for 20 years. He goes, is just selling this vacation home, buying another vacation home, and we're going to be doing this project together. I mean, this client, I've done window treatments for this client in four locations over yeah. 20 years. And I would tell you, if I have worked with Richard for probably 20 years. I don't think the roster of clients is bigger than about 10. To well, your yeah, that, point. That's, that's typical yes. for very successful designers. Yes, and he's it's always It's not about working. quantity of relationships. It's about quality of relationships. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. about going deep and, and establishing this long-term right. thing. And, and really, your, your mission needs to be to educate them about all you can do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, Chances are you start out, as, as so many designers start out doing a project, and the relationship cannot and should not end there. You, you've got to uh, uh, set them up for the next sale, as, as you were talking about Vinny does so well. Mm -hmm. you know, it's really about yeah. uh, 
And I, again, I'm, I'm filtering it again. I'm thinking your other statement that uh, the designer at that level and that success really understands it and is the partner to the person. And I think about the different requests that Richard has called me on in um, honor of his client. And he'll be like, okay, you know, she's looking for me to get this done. Do you have an idea how we can get this done for her? And it's not, you know, necessarily strictly design, right? And it yeah. has something to do with it. But to your point, the his client is thinking to him first for almost everything that they need done connected to their home, whether it's strictly a design project or not, because they view him as their partner in their home as a project. There's a gazillion design providers out there. There's a precious few design partners. Mm. And if you can come across to your clients as a partner, mm -hmm. Um, or not just your clients, maybe realtor to realtors and, mm -hmm. and to other allied professionals. Uh, if you if you come across and, and express this in your bio and your and all your marketing materials that you partner with with these people, then they get it. Then they understand and uh, will be open to working with you in the long run. I love it. I love it. It's so good, Fred. Your vice is always just spot on. It's just. <laughs> It's like, well, thank you for that. It is. It's just always so direct and so clear, and it always gets me thinking. And I love that whenever you share your advice, I always can picture. I'm like, yeah, that's true, and this is where <laughs> I know it's true, and this is you know either it's something that we do, and I see the truth in what you're saying, or you give me ideas on things that we should be doing. And either way, you always deliver, Fred. I'm just so grateful to have had you part of my podcast all these years. Well, thank you so much. And, and it sounds like what, what you're talking about, you, you guys are masters at, at developing these uh, ongoing relationships. And you realize that w one and done is not the way to do it. Right. Uh, You've got to exactly. go beyond the one dimension. You know, right, so. right. Well, yeah. and you've, you have expressed and you have done what you've walked the talk and whatever that saying is. I can't say that whenever either. Yeah. But talk the walk. What is it? Talk the walk and walk. <laughs> walk the talk or talk the walk. or. Uh, but I mean, what I'm going to say is. I don't know. I'm sure I hope you at least read the introduction in my book to your chapter, Fred. Yes, I did. Yes. I, did. I, was, I was flattered indeed. <laughs> yes. But the thing is, I remember finding you and I remember, you know, being so excited that I was Googling you, just as I said in the book, and you came up. I was doing top interior design business coaches, yada, yada. And I reached out to you and you were happy and, you know, just so willing to come on and share your expertise. And to you, your point, Fred, you hit me back in two or three months and you said, Luann, I have another topic that I'd love to share with your audience that I think it might be of value. And I read it and I was like, heck yeah, that would be. And three months later, Luann, I've got another yeah. topic. You did exactly what you're telling us to, to do. As you know, I yes. wanted to partner with you. That's I, I, it. I, I, with the number one design industry podcast in the world, I, I wanted to be a partner of this. Well, so, back then, I certainly wasn't that. I was hoping, and we were well, all I working. Knew, I knew you were on your way. And, but, I mean, I'm just expressing that here we just have this whole conversation, and you're saying how to do it, and you're saying through your experience working with designers that it works, but you also live it and do it. And you did it with me, and you always did it exactly the way you described to a designer to do it say what you can do for the other person, show them how you can be a value. And that's what you did. You never said, Hey, could I just be on again? And left it at that. You said, I'd love to be on again. And here's the topic. And here's the, you know, the 10 things that I think are valuable in this regard for a designer. You made it so that I was like, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's been, it's been to the benefit of all of us that you are so smart at what you do and that you apply it to your own business as well. <laughs> well, thank you. What's the old saying? To, to sell Sally Smith what Sally Smith buys, see the world through Sally Smith's eyes. So figure out <laughs> what it is she needs and, and how you can fill that need. And that's uh, the secret to long-term relationships with these clients. That's funny. Now, I have to say this, Fred. That, do you know how many times I've never heard that set, that that saying before? And do you know that Sally Smith is my designer name of choice? I've probably oh, get out. yes, oh, I've that. probably said it about fifty times in four hundred and fifty episodes. I'll be like, well, I mean, if Sally Smith is going to do it, or you know, how about Sally Smith designer out there? 
<laughs> well, when you see Sally Smith, give her my best. Will you please? You know what would be funny? There has to be one out there. They should email us and say, I'm Sally Smith, the designer. <laughs> when, we, when we end this, I'm going to go to sallysmith.com and see what I can find. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Well, Fred, I have to say, I love your guts. Thank you so much for being on the show again. Thank you for being in my book and bringing value to me and to my listeners and to my podcast. We just, I'm so grateful. Thank you. Well, thank you, Luann. And again, as a reminder to folks, uh, if they want to find out, if they want to get help with their personal promotion profiles, go to biobriefing.com, biobriefing.com, or my website is interiordesignbusiness.net, interiordesignbusiness.net. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All the best to you. All right, before I get to the show, a big shout out and thanks to our sponsor, Article.com. You know you can and you should sign up for your trade account at welldesigned.article.com to work with a team of professionals who know your business, who know what it means to need to source mid-century modern furniture quickly and efficiently. And the team that runs the two to the trade division knows that service, quality, delivery, and returns is at the heart of the client experience. So check them out today, welldesigned.article.com. All righty, Mr. Fred Burns. I mean, how much do you love Fred Burns, right? I mean, let's look at me. I invited him to be in my most recent book, The, uh, the Well-Designed Business, The Power Talk Friday Experts, right? I mean, awesome, awesome man. Such a prolific body of work over nearly three decades, working specifically with interior designers to grow their business. And I would say to you, if you need a boost in your business, if you need to make some changes now so that the final quarter of 2019 finishes strong, I have a couple of suggestions for you. First, I want you to take Fred's advice very seriously and schedule some lunches with previous and current clients. This is not one of those tactics that you say, okay, people talk about that, but who really does it? No, 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 no. Successful interior designers do it. Remember Susan Brunstrom all the way back in the beginning of the podcast. She does it all the time. And we recently had Elisa Grayer, episode 451, who is working to rebuild her business. Okay. After 19 years, she hit a significant slump. And this is literally one of the tactics that Elisa is using to revive her pipeline. Okay. So do it this week. Pick even just one previous or current client to take to lunch. Okay. Then Listen to any and all of Fred's previous episodes on the podcast. He covered everything from how to create a killer bio, how the points on your website that you need to update and be thinking about, all the way to the secrets of selling to luxury clients. All of these episodes will be listed in the show notes, but in particular, check out his previous episode, number 226, titled How to Have a Fabulous Fall. He shares a list of things that you can do to build your pipeline that that are specific to the fall season, which of course we're heading right into. And lastly, I want to say to you, if you are serious and you really truly want to maximize your potential in your business, join me in my live sales for creative course. This course meets by Zoom every week for eight weeks. So that means we're meeting live face to face. You can meet from anywhere you are in the world, but we're together looking at each other's eyeballs and having a real conversation. Okay. And I want to just say, if you have struggles with how to confidently present and sell your services to potential clients, meaning, you know, you do great work, but you just aren't sure how to convey that. Or you worry that if you charge too much, they won't select you for the project. If you go through things like this, then I want to get a hold of you for eight weeks, okay? I want to help you break through this limiting belief and this mindset, okay? This is where I excel, I want to tell you for sure, okay? Another thing that I noticed that people go through, designers face, is that often enough, it seems easy enough to sell that initial design, right? So maybe somebody comes to you for um, a bathroom design and they're willing to understand that you can create the plan. And so they want you to specify the tile, the fixtures and all of that, but then they don't want to sign to have you then oversee and take it to the full service luxury, right? And what happens is 
if you find yourself in this mode where you're consistently getting the first part but not getting the second part and you're struggling with how do I close that loop? These are the kinds of things that we talk about, okay? These are the kinds of conversations that we have, and we talk about the strategies to overcome this, all right? And, and the thing is, I know that this is terribly disappointing when this happens to you. If it happens to you one out of three times, if it happens to you one out of 10 times, it doesn't matter how often, because I know that A, you're disappointed, because of course, you're not going to make your maximum money, right? You're not going to take a project all the way to completion, and that stinks. But I also know that you struggle with this and are disappointed in it because I know that you know that that client doesn't pay for your full service who's actually going to end up spending more money than your full service would have been on the mistakes that they make without you right we both know that to be true right so what happens is they think because they have their little cheat sheet design thing that it's all easy and that what you do isn't a superpower and they're wrong and I know they're wrong but you need to figure out a way to overcome this right so I would love for you to join me in this course, okay? And I just want to say one other thing to you. Think about it this way. Your superpower is design. When people pay you for your superpower and they get better results and they actually save money, right? You understand that. They pay more money to have you execute it, but they get better results and they actually save money. Well, my superpower is sales. When you pay me for my superpower, you get better results and you actually make more money on every project. Okay. That's the truth. When you learn how to frame your value proposition with the right language, with the right strategies, with the right conversation, you make more money, more time. Okay. And so that's what I'd love to teach you how to do. All right. One designer in the current Sales for Creative summer session, Malky Berger, hi Malky, said to me recently, Lou, I've done two masterminds with you and now this Sales for Creatives course and the podcast, I love it and everything else, but being with you every single week in real time is like getting to be inside your brain for an hour and a half, <laughs> okay? And I just thought that was such a great thing for Malky to say. And she went on to say that, you know, working in these small groups in live settings has helped her tremendously in growing her business and growing her profits, not just the interaction with me, but the interaction of the other designers and the ideas and the suggestions that come out of it. Okay. So if you want some of that, if you want to maximize your projects, your profits on those projects, then join me. We're starting very soon. Okay. It starts September 11, 2019. Okay. All you need is one new client because of an aha over these eight weeks to make this investment a no brainer. Sales for creatives.com. All right. I hope you will think about joining me. Now I'll say to you, if you don't need this kind of help, if you know that you are absolutely charging and getting your full worth with every project, then I'm sending you a huge virtual high five. Okay. But if you know you could be charging more and you need to understand and have the language to do that, you need the courage to do that, and you need the strategy for doing it, decide. Decide that today is the day you will put yourself and your business in the priority position. Sign up for my class. Be bold. Decide to make more money. Decide you deserve to make more money. Okay? Decide to be excellent. Thank you so much for joining me again today. This podcast is a production of Window Works, your resource for custom window treatments and awnings. To learn how we can help you on your next interior design project, go to www.windowworks-nj.com. And if you're interested in working with me on your business, either through masterminds or one-on-one -on -one coaching, or you want to know how to get my book, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, or you just want to know what's going on in the podcast land, and where I'm going to be. All of that is found at luannnigara.com. Thank you so much. Have an excellent day.